So in this video, I kind of wanted to start going over logging in Linux. Logging differs a little between each operating system, um, but generally it remains the same. Um, logs are, you know, they're a gathering of events, messages that are happening, and they're being inputted into their respective files. So maybe there was an audit event, someone tried to log in, that got logged in a file. Maybe uh, somebody tried to access a certain file that got logged in a certain file. Uh, maybe a service tried to do something that got logged somewhere. So logging is a way of, of tracking actions of, of users and services and, and the system itself. All right. Um, so in Linux, where are logs stored, right? Logs are generally, they're stored if in the var log parent directory. So if I go to var log, right, here, I do an ls. I have all these files here uh, and I've got an audit directory for audit logs, a crony directory for crone logs, um, HTTPD, Jenkins is a, a service running. It's got its own logs, right? So I can see into Jenkins. Do an LS, I've got a Jenkins log. If I go back here and do a tree of the var log, um, it's essentially the same thing, but in tree format. NGINX service, um, it has its own logs, an access log and an error log. So this is generally where all of, or most of your logs are going to be in a Linux system. And there's different, um, you know, uh, logs for everything. So we'll get the var log messages, which is where the majority of your syslog messages go, right? Uh, but then you have other ones that get more uh, defined, right? So we have secure for login attempts and other security issues. Mail log, it's for if you have a mail server running on the system. Cron logs for any scheduled job, anything related to cron jobs, scheduled jobs you have running. Uh, and then the boot log, uh, which will show you the output of the system as it started up. So how does how does logging work exactly? Like how do how do you know, those events get from, uh, let's see, Jenkins. How do those events that happen get from the system and into this log file? All right, you can see I did a tail of Jenkins.log. It's going to output the end of the file, the last 10 lines. But how did, how did the system get this all into this file? Well, that was done using the syslog protocol. Uh, so the syslog, it stands for system logging, and it's a protocol that's used, widely used by the majority of logging systems out there that do logging to log messages. And uh, on a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 system, uh, we have what's called the systemd journaldd service. So if I do a journal uh, CTL here, I don't want to spell it right, journal CTL, this is a service that's running. Uh, and what it's doing is it's aggregating all the different syslog messages from all the different sources on the system, all the different services that are running on the system. It's aggregating them into this one uh, massive log file called a journal. And it's important to note that this journal is not persistent. Uh, if you reboot, this journal clears out. There's a way to change that. We'll go over that in the uh, journal when we go over journal CTL in the next video. Uh, but this, if you, honestly, this is where I first well, look when I'm having an issue uh, with something, right? I'll usually do a journal CTL, and I'll usually prep for what I'm looking for. So maybe I'm looking for an HTTPD event. Um, but that's, the system D journal D service is collecting all this in one place. And we have another service which is called the rsyslog. So if I do a journal CTL status rsyslog here, um, that's not, I'm sorry, system CTL. You see I have rsyslog.service running. And what rsyslog is doing is it's taking that system journal D service messages, all those messages that are being aggregated and it's reading them and it's sorting them and putting them into their respective log files. So think of it this way. Everything running on the system 
is being compiled into uh, a journal. And our syslog is constantly reading that journal and saying, hey, this is relative to something in my R syslog configuration. Let me go put it where it belongs. And so that brings me to the, the next slide here, which is you know, I've got these uh, syslog priorities here. And these priorities are, um, you know, from if I have a priority of six of info, right? If I say I want to record something that is an info level of a event, an informational level event, uh, it's going the system will record that event and everything below it. Same to say, if I were to say I only want to log uh, priority three error events, non-critical error conditions, it's going to log those along with critical alert and emergency. Um, and it's going to make more sense when we go over the rsyslog configuration here. Uh, so how do we configure rsyslog? Maybe we want to send logs to a different place. Maybe we only want to log certain things. We want to not log certain things. How do, how do we do that? Well, if I cd on over here to etsy uh, rsyslog.d, it's empty. But you can make a file here. Um, and generally, uh, best practice is to make a syslog configuration file. As long as it ends in .com, the system will read that file. Uh, but if we go back one here to etc, so if we via etc rsyslog.conf, which is the default settings for rsyslog, right, and we scroll down here, these are the default settings for rsyslog logging, right? So you remember how I said everything's kind of compiled by the uh, system D journal D service and then our syslog is kind of reading that and sorting it out right so our syslog is saying uh, anything you know coming from mail of any uh, any priority level right so if we go back one here uh, I'm gonna send to var log mail log so this is where we tell our syslog how to read all those messages coming in from syslog and how to sort them so this is always gonna be facility and priority, facility.priority. So if we go back to the original slide here, facility.priority, from where at what level? And then over here we have, you know, the file we're gonna log that message in. So we're saying anything that comes from cron at any debug level, because we know asterisk is a wild card, can mean anything, is gonna go to var log cron. We, and then oppositely here, we have anything from any facility, any service, right? That is emergency level, which if we go back here is uh, code zero, priority emergency, system unusable. So anything from any service that has the emergency level, we're gonna immediately output that to the to the command line where the user can see it. Um, and we can define our own here. So if we wanted to define uh, maybe only debug messages and below because remember it's going to if we define debug here it's going to record debug and then every at level seven and then everything underneath that happens um, but we want from any facility any service debug level and then maybe we've got Maybe we've got a log server. Our, our organization says we need to log all, uh, we need to put all logs in a remote server, right? So maybe the IP, you know, wherever that's located, uh, my NFS share uh, var log, you know, and that's how we would go about that. And then you know once you've made your changes, you'd have to do a you know system CTO restart our syslog. And those changes would take effect, and that's the basics of uh, just a really basic, like very basic, of logging in Linux. You know we've got these messages being aggregated, especially in a Red Hat Enterprise Linux system, by the system D journal D service. Our syslog is reading all those messages. It's sorting them. It's saying, here's this message from this facility at this uh, priority level. Let me go ahead and put it in this location. 
And then in the next uh, video, I'm going to kind of go over journal CTO, how to make that uh, persistent uh, across reboots. Uh, because like we said, uh, journal CTO, um, it's all stored in a, an ephemeral log file, it disappears on reboot.